Talking about injuries, when guys can't practice or they can't practice full speed, it impacts everything. And that's players at all level. Uh, NFL guys are no different if they're not on the field getting the work they need to get at some point it catches up. So I think that's been the biggest deterrent and that all you know took place back in, in August, you know, and that's just one of those, it was a random injury, uh, but it was real and uh, had to deal with it. And it's the good news, it's gotten better week, uh, week to week and he's been able to do more in practice. So there's more to it than just throwing the ball. You know, but you, you also got to, you know, call the plays, uh, you know, be involved in the cadence, all those kinds of things. So, um, yeah, I think it's like a lot of things. It's just a matter of us just keep chipping away here and feel really good about the people involved right now. So it's just a matter of uh, trying to improve our execution week to week. Hopefully with each week of practice, we'll see better execution out there. And um, this is going to be a tough test here because you're going into a tough environment against a team that's really athletic and very opportunistic on defense. So it's going to be another another step up. But uh, good news is he's he's a veteran player who's done it. And uh, at least he's got that to, to draw upon. But you still need to be, you know, in the year and now too in terms of practice. Obviously, Myers, uh, Myers said that, that White was worth a ten point advantage. I was just curious, you know, two thousand nine, you look up and you see a hundred thousand white t-shirts. What do you, what do you remember about that environment? Yeah, I think it's closer to one hundred and ten, uh, and that ten point became seventeen points real fast in oh nine. Uh, you know, we always talk about getting off to a good start, especially on the road. Just try to take the crowd out of it. We did just the exact opposite of that in 09. And, uh, you know, next thing you know, it's 17 nothing. Uh, we're looking up, the place is going crazy. But the other, the rest of the story there is it's a 60 minute game. And, um, you know, when you're playing a team as talented as these, as these guys are, as good as they are, well coached as they are, you know, there's going to be some lows too uh, during, hopefully we create some highs, but there's going to be some lows and you just got to keep playing. And, you know, if you're fortunate, you can make it a 60-minute game. Uh, that's, that's a whole idea. But uh, uh, easier said than done because, you know, these guys really haven't played in a close game yet. And, uh, you know, so that first things first is make it close. And you got to try to figure out how to make it make it go in the fourth quarter. But, uh, yeah, it's to play in a raucous environment like that, it's, it's good to be the home team for sure. Obviously, you can't replace a guy like Luke Lachey, but what kind of expectations do you have for Steven Stilianos, Addison Ostranga? What have you seen from them? Yeah, no, no different than a week ago or, you know, three weeks ago or, you know, a couple of years ago, just basically for everybody. Just want everybody to do their best and keep working and, um, you know, play as well as they can play. And the good news is, you know, Addy's a guy that we threw in there last year, uh, pretty much out of, out of need and really responded well. Um, he's been pretty consistent that way, and I thought he did a good job Saturday. He'll keep getting better the more he plays. Uh, Steve's a guy that I mentioned in the spring who's starting to emerge. I'm not saying it's a Zach Van Valkenburg story, but very similar. Year two, you know, coming from a smaller skier, year, year two, um, just, you know, has a lot more confidence now and a lot more competency. So I thought he did a good job Saturday, and we'll use him more now uh, just by, by pure numbers. And uh, except Piscuzzi jumped in there and did a good job too. So, uh, you know, we, we like to have four guys at least that we can put in the game. and. You know, Eric's done a good job, and you know, he's a veteran guy too. So uh, the, the group will be fine. We're just we're better with Luke. That's all. You know, it's obvious on a couple levels, just playing wise, but also leadership. How, how, how do you see you know, Jamar, Jamar Eric when he was out for as long as he was? How did how did he stay in game? Yeah, it's it's kind of the same discussion. Um, he was good that way, and he's been able to practice this year. Uh, but the biggest thing is that game time you miss, and both both he and. Um, Kate could be in the same discussion and that, you know, these guys didn't play last year at all. And that's, so you miss practice time. And then in Kate's case, he's missed practice time this year because of an injury. Jamari's because of the, uh, the suspension. And, uh, you know, you just, you can't, you can't substitute that either. So the practice time's important and then game time is important. Uh, both these guys are coming on off a long layoff. And uh, the good news is they're just, I think they're just gonna, they'll, they'll climb. And they'll climb faster than the guys never played. That's the other good part about it, because they both have experience. So Jamar's had a good week so far this week, and uh, his attitude's great, and you know, I'm, I'm confident he'll play well Saturday. Kirk, when you look back at, again, at 09, specifically, go down 10 to nothing in two drives, and then uh, how did you guys, A, keep your composure, and then B, what was the impact of Claiborne's block punt, not only in that game, but in the big picture? Yeah, you just, um, you have no choice. You have to try to keep your composure. It's easier said than done because uh, it's easy to buckle in a situation like that. But the, that was a good football team that we had, and those guys hung tough. And um, 
you know, you just get, you find a way. You make a couple of plays. You never know how it's going to come, uh, where it's going to come from. And uh, Claiborne's thing was just, it was one guy's, you know, outstanding effort, basically. It wasn't a punt block that called. Uh, but he was just doing his job. You know, we have one guy pressing the punter in case, you know, make sure the guy gets the ball out. And he, he beat his guy. And it was supposed to be blocking him. And then, you know, it was a great sound. I'll never forget that sound. Uh, it's a really good sound or a really bad sound, depending on what sideline you're on. And um, and then the ball comes right up to his, you know, bread basket, and he took it and ran. And that, you know, he's a special player and a special person. And some, it's funny how that works sometimes, too. Guys like that just uh, spark a team. And then after that, we, we get a little different demeanor the rest of the way. So being from Pennsylvania, does it mean anything more to you to walk into that stadium, into that whiteout? Uh, and Memories of this rivalry. Yeah, I, I carry a chip on my shoulder because they didn't recruit me. Uh, and I, always, I always joke about that. The, was, the obvious reason was they were trying to win. They were trying to win then, yeah. uh, trying to win now. And they didn't recruit guys that ran five flat 40s uh, at linebacker that weighed 200 pounds. So I've, for, I've forgiven them. You know, it's 50 years later. I'm over that, I think. But, uh, uh, yeah, just I've always had great respect for the program. It's always, you know, represented uh, what football should be like. And uh, they've been awfully good. I'll go back. You know, throw trivia at you to how old I am, but uh, you know, 68 or 69, they were playing Kansas, so you know it was old. They were playing Kansas in the Orange Bowl, um, and they stopped Penn State like two or three plays in a row down on the goal line, and then the refs figured out there were 50, or excuse me, 12 guys on the field, so they got penalized, and then they got another crack, and uh, Penn State won the game. I want to say it was like 15, 14, but uh, I can't remember the score. But I just remember that, like, you know, how to go three plays without anybody detecting that. And the officials uh, didn't figure it out. Um, but I remember that game vividly. I think Denny Onkons might have been like a linebacker. I was linebacker you. And uh, uh, Steve Schmier and Mike Breed might have been playing. I don't know. But I, I was a fan of theirs as a kid, obviously, because they were good and Pitt wasn't any good. So that's the way it is. But yeah, I've gotten over that, that non recruitment part. Deont past it. Deontay Vine shared that uh, his uncle passed away. Uh, a week before he, he scored that touchdown this this Saturday. Were you aware of that and, yeah. and just thoughts on, on Deontay's performance, especially considering yeah. that? Yeah, Deontay, I, I was aware of that. Um, yeah, he shared that with us. And um, again, you know, tying in with the, the injury situation, again, there's a, there's a real, real human aspect. And when you have a team of 100 plus players, you can imagine, like it's just, there's always, not always, but frequently something going on, family members, um, and again, we're talking about just impacting lives and it's easy for us sometimes, I say just in general terms, uh, to overlook that stuff or, or you forget you forget those things because we're all focused on the games and performance and all that kind of stuff. And each and every one of these guys have personal lives all from very diverse backgrounds and things going on. And um, yeah, so it's just, it's, it's something that just seems to be, there's always something going on somewhere on the football team with someone's story. And uh, how they choose to handle it is, is up to them. And, uh, you know, we respect that. And uh, I think it was about a year ago this time, uh, Lee Sean was back, I believe, for a funeral uh, somewhere in that ballpark. So it's just, it's, you know, it's tough. And how the, how the players try to deal with it, again, that's kind of personal, but we try to try to support them in each and every way. And as it pertains to Deontay, uh, Dante, he's, he's just had a great career. I mean, he's. Uh, had so much hardship, and it's just good to see him out there playing. I think he's having fun right now. He's able to practice every day, and uh, it sounds pretty mundane and basic, but those are things he hasn't been able to do during his career uh, without, you know, having some brace on his wrist or whatever, you know. So it's just good to see him, you know, playing the way he wanted, wants to, and I think, you know, envisioned himself when he came here a couple of years ago. Seemingly wherever your range, wherever Penn State is ranked, it's been a competitive matchup in four of the last five within one possession. What is it that you think leads to such competitive Iowa Penn State games? I, I don't know. I mean, you know, it's just it's one of those deals. And it's funny in conference play. Sometimes those some some teams match up that way, and some don't. Sixteen games are a real good reminder of uh, what it can be like if we're not really ready to go. And uh, I mean, that was really ugly, really fast, and that's. Uh, it's just a reminder. I mean, they, they, they've, 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 they've got a really talented football team right now, but that, that's not totally new to them. Uh, they, you know, if we're ranked or not ranked, uh, you know, where we're ranked, if you're past uh, probably eight or ten right now, it really doesn't matter at this time of year. It, it'll be more significant in November. Uh, but if you're in the top ten, you're probably a top ten team. I don't think anybody's surprised Penn State's up there right now just because of the way they played last year, the way they finished. And, um, again, you know, 
it was a really good quarterback, but they have a guy that might be better right now. So, um, you know, when you're in a position to do that kind of stuff, it's it's not a surprise they're ranked the way they are. And, uh, you know, but again, I'm, we're at the other end, and we, we need to be thinking about, like, you know, the what ifs, and we better be ready to go here. No, I'm oh, sorry, you, you were asking a question. I'll come right back. Yeah. Um, not an awful lot other than, I mean, so I've got a tie to Pennsylvania, I've got a tie to Connecticut too, and uh, things have really changed up there. It's ironic right now, our two starting receivers are both from that state. It's got nothing to do with me going to college, I can promise you that. Uh, Ken O'Keefe recruited up there and knows, knows the area. Uh, but uh, my point there is that high school football uh, has really changed quite a bit. Uh, you know, the, the prep schools up there in Connecticut have, have done a much, they're much different than they were 15, 10 years ago or even, you know, probably 20 years ago, obviously. So, you know, it was just one of those things where we matched up. He was very interested in us. We were more than interested in him. It just uh, ended up being a really good, good match. So we're glad to have him. He's a great young guy and a great family. There's a bit of a sour taste in Penn State's mouth after the 2021 game. There was a little bit of controversy about accusations of flopping. Uh, obviously, they've lost their quarterback, lost the league, lost the game. Are you expecting a little bit of extra juice out of them coming into Not the game? Not, not really. I mean, I don't know how many of their players were here in 21, and uh, I don't know how many of our guys were here either. And then probably like me, not many of them remember much about it other than it was a tough game. You know, we had to make a big play to really get back into it. And, um, you know, I, I think, you know, once you play a game, it's usually pretty much goes to rest and you move on to the next next season or whatever, next game. So, you know, I don't think it's a big deal there. Along those lines, was that any was that something that you addressed at all with James Franklin afterward? No, no I mean, there's nothing to talk about other than like you know, congratulations or good luck. There's, in fact, there, there's no there's no good thing to say. I'll, I'll share this with you after 20 some years of being a head coach. I, I don't know of a good thing to say afterwards other than good luck. I mean, what do you say? If you win or lose, what do you say? It's not much to say. So, good luck. <laughs> that, that long touchdown that uh, Western Michigan had, what, what all did you see go wrong? Yeah, obviously a breakdown in technique and communication. And um, one, one thing I do know uh, is that, like, you know, you can't play good defense if you don't tackle. And then the other thing, if, if you give up big plays, and they, they usually go together. But we didn't have a chance to tackle on that one because it's just, you know, miscommunication. And that all three phases, that, boy, it's, that's, it's like electricity in the water. It's just a bad, bad combination. Bad things really can happen fast if, if not everybody's on the same page, and that's that's really kind of what happened there. And then you know some poor technique on top of it. So you know <laughs> we better we better not do that again, or it's you know because we, we won't be able to survive you know easy touchdowns like that. One thing about that 09 game, I know we're talking about that a lot, but you ran the ball pretty well that day with Robinson and Wade. Yep. Um, given what you did this last year, do you feel more confident that you can? Established some run up there, obviously you probably have to, right? It, it would certainly be helpful. Um, it's hard to find people that beat these guys because they haven't lost many games in the last, you know, 50 years, 60 years. Uh, but, you know, the teams that beat them last year did run the ball a little bit uh, successfully, and that, that's always – but that, that's a truism in football. If you, if you can run successfully, unless you just throw it every snap, um, you know, and, and if you're throwing it every snap, at least if we're throwing it every snap, that's not going to be good. You know, some teams are designed that way, we're not. So, yeah, you got to try to find a way. But th these guys are a really unique challenge. They're very aggressive, very athletic, and, um, you know, they make, they make it tough on you. Kirk so Kamari and Terrell both fully in the game plan. Oh, yeah. Guess. Yeah, I mean, they're all three of those guys are in there. And Max, Max jumped in. It was great to see him get a touchdown. I mean, he's worked hard and uh, – He's a crowd favorite, but he's, he's a team favorite. I mean, the guy, the guys all pull for the guys that are, you know, doing scout team work and things like that. But yeah, the, those two young guys have been. This, this can be a little different arena, though, than you know, for what they're used to. But uh, it's part, you know, they're going to find out now. So here we go, Kirk. When we, we, when we've talked about the wide receivers, you've kind of mentioned staying patient, staying with the process. With Luke going down and his injury, does that kind of accelerate maybe the process a little bit with the wide receivers to get them more involved, or how are you kind of? Approaching yeah, it with yeah no, Penn State will kind of dictate what, what happens there, but uh, the receivers are doing a really good job. You know, it just, I, I think they've really practiced well. I think they're doing well on the, on the field. And, um, yeah, I got, I got total confidence in that group. And we have confidence in our tight ends. We still have a good group there. You know, we'd be better with Luke, obviously. Uh, but, you know, we, we still have a good group. So we're not going to 
just change our, our whole approach by any stretch. You know, so um, you know, let's keep keep trying to figure out what's the best way to maybe give us a chance to move the ball against these guys. Caleb Brown got his first touch uh, this last weekend uh, in that game against Western Michigan. Did you see his reaction? Um, just thoughts on on getting him involved and it, it's good to get anybody involved, especially if it's the first time. You know, it's just a positive and. Uh, it's not part of our game plan necessarily, but he's he is part of our game plan and that you know he's in our rotation and uh, has done a really really good job. And as I said earlier, I think you know I think he's a, he's on the if you will still in the developmental mode a little bit, but uh, he works hard every day. He's got a good skill set, and it's just a matter of time he'll he'll get some uh, production too. Coach, with Penn State's ability to really kind of defend the pass well, I guess is there a greater uh, it, it'd just be helpful in general uh, if we can do that. We're, we're better if we can play balanced, at least have the throw to be unbalanced. And, um, you know, if they make you, especially this team, if they make you one dimensional and they, they can get after the quarterback uh, very aggressively, and uh, they got a bunch of guys up front that can move and they're really slippery and just, you know, crafty. So, yeah, if, I mean, if it gets into one of those games, I don't think that's a good thing for us. And it'd be better if we could, but again, easier said than done. When you look at that, Composure. I mean, he's he's very talented. He's a big guy and can run and throw. And uh, but he's really just seems very relaxed and in command and very uh, composed back there. And I'll go back to he got extensive playing time in the opening game a year ago. Uh, it was the first game of the Big Ten last year against Purdue on that Thursday night. He played a lot and really did a good job. So I mean, it's not like he's he didn't look like he was out of place at all. And now you know he's got the keys to the car, so he's doing a really good job with it. You were mentioning a scary open. We keep on hearing from players about his speed. What do you think is kind of the next steps for him in his development? So, same, just the key word you said, development. You know, he just, uh, is, what we're asking him to do is totally different. Not not unlike, you know, all the guys that are playing on the defensive line. We, we play a little bit differently than some people, and um, so there's, a, there's a learned aspect to it. And uh, I think that's what he's going through right now. And uh, talked to him last week, just reminding him that, you know, YA Black wasn't YA Black three years ago. Same thing with Logan Lee. Um, you know, go down the line any of the guys, but especially those interior guys, there's a real art to playing in there. It's, it's something you learn how to do. And uh, I mentioned a guy like Y Black, who's, you know, pretty big human being. And, you know, we, Brady Reef played very successfully in there, 260, 265, Carl Klug. So we've had all kinds of body types in there. Um, and Terry is a really talented guy. He's a great young guy, good attitude. And he's, he's a tough guy. He's just got to learn how to play, and then with that will come, you know, playing faster and a little bit more uh, effectiveness that way. How much of the pass rush or the lack thereof is, is kind of based more on the, the quick game that the other teams are throwing at you versus not having somebody who can really get you? Yeah, I, I think we have guys who can get there if they get a chance. It's just, uh, you yeah, know, a lot of that stuff is a couple things. You know, sack numbers are important. Obviously, you'd rather have them than not have them, but they, they don't tell the whole story. You know, can you be disruptive? And then to your point on the quick game, uh, sometimes getting your hands up is more disruptive than, you know, trying to get pressure on a guy if the ball's coming out pretty fast. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's it's a little bit more, you got, you got to move past the stats. I think it just really go off what you're seeing on the tape. And, you know, I, th I think we've got a couple guys that can, can be disruptive there. We just haven't had that opportunity really yet. With the development Sebastian Castro has had since he's been here. I mean, was there a time like a conversation or a play or anything where you kind of saw things kind of click for him? I, I think it was the bowl game last year, is where that month, not just the game itself, but that month, um, you know, things happen faster. And I, I don't mean this, um, how, how do I want to say this? But like our opponent right now, and there are a couple teams in our conference where their guys, uh, they, um, jump in and, and move faster. You know, they, they, it's a quicker, they get there quicker to the, to the, you never make it to the end line, but you know what I mean? They um, play a little bit more proficiently, a little quicker, because they may come in a little bit more advanced than a lot of our guys. You know, we're, we're not getting a lot of five-star guys that my sister, Joel, could say, yeah, take that guy, that guy, that guy. So, you know, there's a little bit of a learning curve or a growing curve, and uh, whether it's physically or learning how to play, all those kinds of things factor in. Uh, but that, that's, you know, that's just the world we've lived in for quite some time. We're comfortable there. But I guess my point is, and I think it's true at every school, not just here, uh, whether you're, you know, a top five program or a bottom five, or, you know, 
everybody develops. If you're doing things right, you should be getting better with each week, every day. And um, yeah, so, but it's all player driven, really. The, the player drives that. Uh, I mentioned Brady Reef, like, you know, there's no way physically he would have played in there his first or second year. But then, you know, he started gaining some traction, get, get a little stronger, and all those kinds of things. Um, so, you know, that's a race every athlete runs. And I'm sure in all sports, but I just know football a little bit better. So, you know, I guess my point is you just never know when that light's going to turn on. And uh, that's one thing I learned in the 80s. Like, for certain guys, you just never know. As long as they're giving effort and they care and they got pride and all those kinds of things, you, you just keep coaching them and see what happens. And you never can tell. Think about Ron Hallstrom, who didn't start a game for four years and ends up being a first-round draft pick, plays 14 years in the NFL, and never started a major college football game until his fifth year in college. So, you know, you just never know if the guy's got the right attitude and he's, he's got a you know skill set that will enable him or allow him to have success. So you just keep working with guys, and, and they got to keep working, though. That's a key point. Some guys do and some don't. Um, and then other guys, it happens a lot sooner. You know, I mean, I mentioned Ostranga. He played last year, so he showed enough where, okay, hey, we can probably put this guy in there and he'll do okay. And uh, right now, I'm glad we did because <laughs> at least he's got you know he's got more experience than he would have if he had redshirted. But more of our, I guess what I'm saying, more of our guys are typically going to redshirt than maybe some other schools. Coach uh, Steven Stiliano, what have you seen from him, and how can he kind of help fill that uh, void that Luke left? Yeah, I guess the the parallel, like I mentioned earlier, is uh, Van Valkenburg. You know, his first year here, played well enough to give AJ a you know AJ come on over and get a Gatorade and you know take a couple plays off here, and then we'll get you back out. So he was good enough to do that, but he really wasn't a factor in the game. And then his second year, he was definitely a factor. So I'm not saying it's exactly the same, but I think that that evolution, uh, Steve's a lot more comfortable now. I uh, didn't look overly comfortable a year ago or confident. And now I think he, starting in the spring, we started to see that. Like he felt, felt like, yeah, I'm getting this a little bit. And I think I understand what they're asking me to do. And uh, I thought he did a really nice job Saturday. And he'll, he'll get more more snaps now as we move forward. Speaking of that girl, that's right. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, I think Jackson, obviously, a different situation than the mm -hmm. D2 guy. But he's having to do a lot of that growing on the field sure. through that role. Uh, do, are you seeing more of an accelerated growth from him as a veteran? And do you think that he is sort of ready for a task like Penn State? Yeah, we're going to find out Saturday. Uh, I think he is. I mean, he's, he's a good football player. Um, he, he, you know, we talked about all these guys, these older guys, uh, the transfer guys. Uh, his circumstance different in that you mentioned he he has played he's played the last two years played really well whole different defense so he's learning that aspect and then he went not there this spring nor was Rusty Feth nor was McNamara basically because you know he was doing his throwing uh, Eric Hall really wasn't doing a lot in the spring so you know th those gaps of time but yeah the guys that have played I think are more capable of making it up faster than somebody say who hasn't played you know so you got these different discussions but you know, that's the interesting part about all this stuff. It's like a puzzle in some ways, and you just try to. But every, everything we thought Nick or hoped he was and thought he was in recruitment, that's who he is. He's a extremely serious, extremely mature, ultra focused, great team guy, and a, a really strong leader. So, I, I'm gone, with every week, I think we'll see him keep playing better and better. And I'd say the same thing about Jay. Jay's been in the program, growing the other way. You know, one of those guys that maybe wasn't heralded coming in here. I'm glad he's on our team. Well, we have been for several years just because the way he operates, you know. So he'll, he'll be a, he'll have a good career here just because he's a, he really cares about it and works at it.